on. I was very happy that uh, we had so many families who wanted to come and spend their Diwali holidays with us at the retreat center. Um, and I hope some of you may join us this weekend. I'll, I'll talk more about that uh, afterwards. Um, the, the reading that I wanted to uh, quote from this evening is from the Bhagavad Gita. And this is a uh, uh, quotation that Swamiji said that Master quoted from, from very often. He who beholds me everywhere and who beholds everything in me never loses sight of me, nor do I lose sight of him. This is uh, chapter 6, verse 30. He who beholds me everywhere and who beholds everything in me never loses sight of me, nor do I lose sight of him. And for me, this is a, um, a central aspect of what I think we're all trying to do as devotees. We're trying to develop a closer relationship with God himself, uh, a closer relationship with the God within us, the God all around us, the divine in every form. And so part of it is uh, being able to see God, first of all, and then keeping our sight on God. And then with that comes the blessing in that God doesn't lose sight of us either. And so um, if God sees that a, a major catastrophe is coming into our lives or about to come into our lives, maybe he'll mitigate things a little bit for us. It, I, I think this is one of the biggest blessings you can have. If you've got God on your side, you know, just like Arjuna in the chariot, he had God on his side. And so victory was assured. So we want to be in that place. Um, and so I thought I would talk a little bit about how to make that practical in our daily lives. Um, one of the um, chants that we started with before the meditation was, I want only thee. And I didn't know how to play it, so thankfully Jamal did. <laughs> um, and in, I, I wanted to uh, start with that chant because I think that... Um, sincerely want being able to sing I want only thee is part of a key to being able to see God well um, Jesus said that uh, blessed are the pure in heart for they shall see God and I think that having a one-pointed desire for God wanting only God is a big part of it um, Sri Teshwar has said some things about meannesses of the heart, and I think that's in there too, but I, I don't want to get distracted with that. Um, Swami Kriyananda himself suggested an approach to, uh, when, when we have a chant like, I want only thee, and, and maybe parts of our mind are saying, well, yes, I do want thee, but there's also, you know, this, this word only. Um, maybe as a stickler, and there's also this and that and that, and maybe a list of things. But Swamiji su suggested that if we can learn to see that the reason we want those things is that we want the divine within them. Um, because, you know, God is in everything, really. So if we can realize that uh, whatever it is that we're desiring, at least see God in that and try to uh, make that uh, so it's not just wanting an ice cream cone, for example, but it's wanting the taste of the divine within that ice cream cone. I mean, that's a, maybe a silly example, but um, God is in everything. And so the, the more that we can see God in everything and remember that God is in everything, the more that we can sincerely sing and mean it 
I do want only thee. There's a little bit of delusion in me still, um, and I'm working on that. I want to purify that, but, but that can help us. Um, another illustration that I thought was beautiful, there's a, um, uh, there was a, a, a Christmas meditation, I believe it was, uh, with Yogananda and the monks, and uh, and probably many others, and uh, uh, Divine Mother came in that meditation, and Yogananda started started talking with Divine Mother in that meditation, and finally um, Divine Mother started leaving. And Yogananda was carrying on this discourse, and, and, and you know, why are you leaving? Oh, oh, you say that it's the worldly desires of the people present that are making you leave. I think that statement, that illustration, has a lot to do with why it is that we can't see God completely or more completely. I think every step in that direction helps. But Swamiji gave a... Um, uh, uh, Swamiji had all these wonderful ways, analogies, metaphors to help us see things more clearly. And one that I never thought of before, never heard of before, but I heard very recently on a one, beautiful tape of his, was that um, if you're trying to thread a needle and you uh, take your, your uh, thread, and, and, but there's one little thread you know, or one little filament of the thread sticking out, then it won't go through the eye of the needle. And um, that's kind of how it is with our attempt to be one-pointed in our desire for God. And when we can be one-pointed in our desire for God, then we can see God. So um, trying to see that, that God is in, you know, even in that last filament, that, um, or all the last filaments, maybe I, hopefully you don't have filaments as spread as I might have. <laughs> I think my filaments are closer together than they used to be anyway, but um, we're, we're all working on these things. Uh, so the, the more we can get a one-pointed desire for God, the more we'll get a response from God as well. Um, another part of uh, what this quotation is all about, those who never lose sight of me, I never lose sight of them, is a practice of, practice of the presence of God. And it's a central practice. It's about um, bringing God into our daily lives. And I found a beautiful, um, uh, there was a, a lecture that Yogananda gave um, in, when was it? Um, October 4th, 1942, but it got published in 1954, um, and it was all about realizing God in daily life. And it, and it listed a few steps, and I'm not going to summarize a whole um, beautiful uh, article, but um, I wanted to, to emphasize a few key steps that I thought would be helpful for all of us to think about when we um, uh, try to carry God into daily life. Um, Yogananda said, um, practice the presence of God in daily life. First, by making your meditation very deep. And uh, it, it makes sense. I mean, the, the more we go deep in God in meditation, the more maybe we can hold on to God afterwards, after our meditation. Yogananda also emphasized that um, as long as our mind isn't yet used to deep meditations, it won't appreciate long meditations. So start by trying to make your meditations as deep as you can. And the um, trying to want God alone will help in that. Somebody once asked Swami Kriyananda, what's, uh, how do I, how can I deepen my meditations? And Swamiji's response was very simple. 
get more devotion, love God more. That's, that's really the most important thing. So the more that we can um, get all those filaments together and get our, our desire for God more one focused, one pointed, the more that will help our meditations go deeper as well. Um, then, second step, <clears throat> Next, practice long meditations with that depth. So take, try to take the same depth that you had, but make it gradually longer and longer. And Yogananda said some wonderful things here. Th that is what takes you to his kingdom. Until you learn to practice meditation both long and deep, God will not reveal himself to you. That's why Gandhi devoted one day a week to silence and meditation. All saints who have found God sought that silence. So we make our meditations deeper, then we lengthen them. Um, hopefully all of you with busy schedules can find time for that. <laughs> or take a day off every week. Hopefully both. Both is better. Both is better. Um, third, hold on to God present, God's presence as you transition from your meditations into your daily activities. Um, I don't have Yogananda's words there, but, but that's the step. You want to transition from your deep, long meditations and take it into your daily life. And I want to share with you an experience I had that relates to this, that really helped me to see um, how that was possible. Um, this story happened during the first um, long seclusion I'd ever had as a devotee. And I uh, was doing my best to make my meditations deeper and longer both. And thankfully, I was able to get somewhere during that week. It was a very beautiful week, actually. Um, and it was, this was a week at uh, a place called uh, the Seclusion Retreat, which is near Ananda Village, but not quite Ananda Village. Um, those of you who've seen um, Finding Happiness, there's a part of that movie that was filmed at the Seclusion Retreat. Anyway, they had seclusion cabins, and in those days at least, um, there, you could make arrangements so that they would bring you one meal a day, and you wouldn't have to see anyone, go near anyone. It was just you and God uh, for the, the whole time. And so during one of my deep and long and very enjoyable meditations, um, I heard somebody walking up to my door of my cabin, and leaving a plate of food, and there was some aluminum foil over the food so it wouldn't get dirty and so on. And I thought, oh, that's wonderful. I've got dinner waiting for me. But I thought, oh, this is, this is too wonderful. I don't want to break this, this meditation. Um, and maybe another 15 minutes went by, and then the, the thought came back to my mind, my dinner's out there still. Should I get up? And then I remembered um, a story that uh, Swami Kriyananda had told that um, uh, one day he got up from a beautiful meditation at, uh, um, back at Mount Washington um, and he thought, oh, this is a natural state, it'll come back quickly. It didn't come back quickly. <laughs> So I thought, no, this is, this is, you know, I've got a good contact here. I don't want to get up and, and um, interrupt that just for food. I don't want to be attached to food. So maybe another minute, 15 minutes went by. Again, the thought came, my dinner's still waiting. Now my dinner's getting cold. <laughs> And I debated, what should I do? What should I do? What should I do? And I thought <clears throat> to try an experiment. And I thought, let's try not saying goodbye to God 
so I, I said a quick prayer. Thank you, God, for this beautiful meditation. Won't you stay with me as I eat my dinner? And I got up very, very slowly. Do I still feel God's presence? Do I still feel God's presence? And I still felt God's presence. Um, and I consciously moved very slowly, got out the door, pulled the aluminum foil off, enjoyed my dinner with God's presence. And that was a very good lesson for me in seeing that it's possible, especially if you've established a connection, it's possible to hold on to that connection, even in activities. I was being very careful, but you know, with practice, you can, you can get a little better at holding on to God, even in the midst of more active things. And then I also came to a, um, a realization. There was a thought in my mind that was sort of not even a conscious thought. Um, I'd been in the habit of, you know, for uh, about a year maybe by then, of uh, regular meditation. And as I would get up from my meditation, I would say healing prayers, and I would say, thank you, God, for this beautiful meditation. And that's what I was aware of on a conscious level. But with this experience of staying with God, I realized that something else was happening on a subconscious level that I hadn't really been aware of. Somewhere in my mind, part of my mind was saying, as I was saying consciously, thank you for being with me in this meditation, a subconscious part of my mind was saying, and goodbye. <laughs> Not expecting God to stay with me at all anymore. It's been nice sharing this time with you. So long. You know, like, like hanging up on the phone conversation. And I realized wait a minute, I can change this. I can go from that subconscious goodbye to a conscious prayer. Thank you for this great meditation. And won't you please stay with me throughout this day? Guide my day. Um, help me to share my day in your joy and, and share your joy with others and so on. And it was a, a big revelation for me. Um, but I, I, it's a true principle for all of us, I'm sure. If I can do it, <laughs> surely you can do it too. So um, that's the transition period that I wanted to talk about. Um, Yogananda, back to Yogananda's quotes now from that beautiful article. Before you perform an action, while you are performing an action, and when you have finished that action, think of him. So I want to go through these one by one. Um, so before we do an action, actually Yogananda gave us a beautiful prayer. Um, it is, oh, I will reason, I will will, I will act, but guide thou my reason, will, and activity to the right course in everything. If we don't invite God to stay with us through the day, if we don't invite God into each activity, God won't impose himself. There's another little beautiful quote from this article. Um, Yogananda says, the Lord of the universes is so humble that he does not speak, lest in so doing he influence the devotee's use of free will to choose or reject him. That's incredible humility. Um, we have to give God the clear sign, I want you to be with me in this activity. With that invitation, he can come. If we don't give him an invitation, He's probably not going to come because he doesn't want to influence the devotee's use of free will to be able to freely reject God. 
That's a strong kind of unconditional love and patience, both, um, to wait for all his children to, to want God enough to ask for, to be invited. So be sure to invite God before any activity. During activity, um, Yogananda says we should cultivate the will to think of God during activity. He also says duty performed as an offering to God is as spiritually beneficial as meditation. Um, I, I wanted to share one activity that I that I really got a, a sign that God was there. Um, the, my my first pilgrimage to Italy, I went to a place called Leramo, which means uh, hermitage, um, where St. Francis had been. And there was a book where Yogananda had told his stories of being in a lot of places, including Leramo. And I remembered that when Yogananda had gone to Leramo, um, he said that, that um, St. Francis joined him and they walked together, maybe hand in hand. I'm not clearly, I'm not sure if, if that was part of it, but they walked together. And so when I got to Laramo, the thought occurred to me, St. Francis, won't you walk with me too? And shortly after I prayed that, there, there's, it's a beautiful outdoor forest area. And there were a few caves and things where the disciples, um, uh, those who were with St. Francis lived. Um, and so I was walking in this outside area, and there were all these doves around. And I noticed right after I said that prayer, and I was walking along this beautiful path, one of those doves started walking in parallel with me. You know, step for step. He had to take more steps than I did. <laughs> His feet were smaller, but he was keeping pace with me and going parallel to me. And I thought, wow, that's a beautiful um, sign that St. Francis is there. You know, I, I, I can't see him as well. I, I think all of these things work together. When we, when we can um, get our desire for God more one-pointed, then we can see God better and we're more aware of God's presence, even though he's hiding behind all these um, creatures in creation and uh, behind our thoughts and behind other people's thoughts. Um, there's a few other aspects in um, the doing part of it. Um, there's, uh, there was a, uh, a mystic by the name of Frank Laubach who had what he called a game of minutes. Uh, first of all, he, do, he started an experiment to see how many minutes he could share with God. Um, and then he started advocating that for everyone else because he saw what beautiful transformations that made in, in his life. Um, and he started realizing that's possible for everyone. So the game of minutes is about trying to remember God in every minute for an hour. Can you do that? Um, and, you know, once you can do it for one hour, try it for two hours. Um, I've got a little beeper on my phone. It beeps once an hour. And when I hear that beep, it's like, oh, a reminder. Am I thinking of God? Did, how, how, how much did I think of God in the last hour? Um, and it's usually a humbling reminder because um, I'm, I've got a lot on my mind. I'm forgetful. But... Um, it's, it's a challenge. Um, and if we, the more we can develop that, the more that we, like Frank Laubach, um, can uh, see, him, see God with us. Uh, he said he got to the point um, uh, where he went beyond just trying to see God in once every minute. Um, he was constantly asking, what father do you desire said? What fa father do you desire done in this minute? Trying to attune himself. Swami Krenanda said he went through the same thing, trying to tune into the will of Yogananda. 
We can do the same thing with Yogananda. What would you like me to do? Think through me. Act through me. Um, and the more we consciously attune with Yogananda that way, uh, there's another aspect. Um, it's another quote from Frank Laubach. This sense of cooperation with God in little things is what so astonishes me, for I never have felt it this way before. I need something and turn around to find it waiting for me. It's like God, you know, he was never losing sight of God. So God was looking out for his little needs um, as well. Uh, so, uh, keeping the presence of God in every minute as we're active is a beautiful thing. When we're done with our activities, um, there's a passage in the Gita, the very first line in the Gita, um, Dhritarashtra, the blind mind, asks Sanjaya, my sons on the battlefield, the Pandavas and the Kauravas, what have they done? And in Yogananda's commentary in this great scripture, he says that Veda Vyasa is giving us a hint of the importance of introspection. When we're done with things, we need to look back. How did we do? Look back at the last hour. How many minutes did I was I able to think of God at all? Look back at the last day. How well did I do? Um, did the Pandavas win? Did the good side within me win? The noble qualities? Or did my bad habits take over? And in looking back on these things, we get a chance to learn our lessons so that the next day can go better and better and more and more focused on God and more and more uh, seeing God in everything loving God in everyone, um, and we can further develop this relationship with God outwardly, inwardly, by eventually being with God all the time until we can merge with God completely.